Hey guys, it's Warzone. Welcome back to another episode of my F1 2019 career mode. Uh, this race will be taking place in Canada. For the Canadian Grand Prix. And we've got our engine power, rear downforce, weight reduction, up, uh, upgrades completed. And uh, our drag one failed. That would have helped us a lot on the long stretch here at this track. We do have a sharp curve upward on the R&D chart, which puts us closer to Toro Rosso, who hasn't, looks like they haven't updated this, or for this race, haven't brought any upgrades, so they've been passed by Alfa Romeo, and the midfield cars of Haas, Racing Point, McLaren, and Renault are all look pretty close, and then the big separation to Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes. So let's now head to qualify. Welcome to Montreal, where the teams are ready for today's practice session at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Personally, I think we're in for a real treat today. In 1999, the outside track wall, situated on the last corner of the lap, ended the race of three Formula One world champions, Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve. Since then, the wall has come to be known to fans around the world as the infamous Wall of Champions. Turns 13 and 14 are definitely the most demanding corners on the track. A quick chicane section entering at over 180 miles per hour, drivers use plenty of kerb and get very close to the wall. But hitting those kerbs at the wrong angle can easily put the car offline. You'll see a lot of drivers bail out of committing into turn 13 using the escape road to avoid contact with the wall. Welcome again then, and we hope you're ready for another fantastic session as the teams prepare to unleash their cars for qualifying at the Canadian Grand Prix. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Fermé conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. qualifying lap. I feel like in the race we're going to do really well because uh, we've got a really good engine and uh, most of the upgrades I've been doing is for um, weight reduction and drag reduction so I think that helps us a lot. That will help us a lot. Straights and there's like one huge, well, there's multiple long straights on this uh, track. moment and we're going out for a second run here. Looks like we are going to improve a little bit. And we're looking enough. P6. P18. My bad. For the race. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. 
if you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend, as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit, peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline, and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Now, we probably ought to start by discussing Pierre Gasly. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromised start. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Vettel, Raikkonen, Roman Grosjean and Verstappen, Weber, Perez, Sainz and Lando Norris, Stroll, Ricardo, Alexander Albon and Gasly, Butler, Leclerc, Kevin Magnussen and George Russell, a Williams and Nico Hülkenberg completes the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, so for this race, it looked like a couple of cars ended up passing us by the end, so we dropped down to P19, I think it was. And uh, I believe we're going to do the two stop with the uh, super soft or softs and then to the mediums and then another set of mediums we'll go to the five red lights start the race and they're out we get a good start it looks like but then Russell starts pulling away uh, Hulkenberg doesn't get too far ahead but we just dive bomb into the turn. We can't even get on the road. We get an illegal overtake because we left the room we needed when we made the dive bomb. So we have to give the position back to Pierre Gasly. We're up in the P16. We look for look the dummy inside of Pierre Gasly for a move. It doesn't really work out. We go really wide into the corner, but it really helps us to make another dive bomb up to P14. We leave a little bit of room for Albon. And uh, we complete the new stroll just ahead. We've made up like five places already. Now going to Kane, we lose the back end just a little bit there. Stroll's able to pull ahead, but we're also uh, creating a gap to Albon behind. We get into the hairpin. We get a huge dive bomb on Stroll. And we go around his outside, or inside, and complete the move down the straight. And up ahead we have Ricardo and the Renault. And uh, it's kind of a big gap with Stroll. He's going to try to make a move on us again on the inside of leaving the space. Go over the curb a little bit. Now Botas gets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. But he goes over 1 minute 18. And then uh, we're a lot slower than that. We look to the outside. Ricardo not really going to be making a move there. Kind of dumb. But we are gaining a little bit. Good. We're pulling away from the stroll. So it does look like we have some speed. And we make another dive bomb on Ricardo. We kind of force our way in there. Go around his outside in the next turn. And uh, complete the pass. And then we have Devin Butler up ahead. He's in P11. So uh, he's been... He probably qualified pretty well. Especially since he's in the second worst car, he qualified pretty high. We've got a decent amount of cars ahead, pretty close. They're not really pulling away. I think like a Mercedes and Ferrari, just like kind of gone. Maybe it's a couple of them. Both of them. We go around the outside of Butler though, and uh, we complete the pass before we exit the chicane. DRS now. Away from and up ahead we have 
Lando Norris and Ten, so we are pretty close to scoring points here. If we just get past Norris, it's already lap four, so making a lot of good progress. Later on to them that to that lap, got ooh, we hit wave. So we must have gone past Norris before that. Um, must have missed it, but we're in P10, so we're in the points playing positions. Uh, and hopefully we can score points for the first time here. And Grosjean, we just send it round the outside. We get a good run into the corner. Quick pairs and Raikkonen going side by side into the chicane, slow them both down. Weber is going on the, going to make a move on his teammate around the outside. He locks up, but we decided to follow him because he was um, going pretty quickly. So we thought he would be able to shoot around the outside, but he ended up locking up, so that didn't work. Now on lap six, on the back straight. We're trying to get to Waver. And we go to the inside to the chicane. We touch a little bit, almost spin out. He's on the mediums. So I wonder if he's just kind of trying to once we block off Grosjean. And we're able to defend the position. And, uh, we're still trying to get, find a way to get past Waver. He's already I think he scored one race before this, I mean. So he already has points to me. We don't. And, uh, he gets up. He scored, I think he scored a couple times. Halfway. So, on lap seven, we're getting we're under push from Crojan. He goes around the outside. We touch him a little bit there. I wasn't really ready for that move. And uh, that slows us down a lot, so we was getting away. We get so much because I'm just suck at breaking out in this game. Uh, the breaking zones. Yeah, it just doesn't totally help. The gap still is about the same. From before, Raikkonen goes defensive, Waver's gonna go around his outside in the chicane. We're just gonna turn to the inside, and we gain so much. We just need to control ourselves in the breaking a little bit better. That slows down Waver. Grosjean and Waver are going to go side by side now. And Bill Waver is going to go to our inside. Looks for to our outside. Doesn't work and he's able to stay ahead of Grosjean. Now on lap 8, look on the move for Raikkonen. Trying with the inside. Doesn't look. We have DRS on him. So it looks like a P6. Others in that position is pulled away. And we look to the inside here. Make the move. It's Carlos Sainz. He's in P6. So I'm guessing people pit, or something happened to one of the. I think it, yeah, Pierre Gasly is kind of far down. That's why uh, Sainz in P6. But now lap nine, Raikkonen is going to go to our outside with DRS. And uh, he's gonna complete the move and lock up right in front of us, so he hit the back end of his car. And uh, we get a little bit of front wing damage, not too bad. Now we're under pressure from Waver into the hairpin. We're gonna get boxed in. And Waver's also gonna try and make a double overtake here. It doesn't work. We're gonna get a decent exit. We hit the curb a little bit, that slows us down. And uh, Waver passes, so we're down to P9. Both have, we both have DRS on Raikkonen, Raikkonen goes defensive again, he goes Waver on the outside, and we get tra and Grosjean tries to make a lunge on us, this slows them both down, and we get a double overtake on both Alfa Romeos, because Waver launched himself into Raikkonen, hitting the curb too hard, and uh, looks like Botas pit, and uh, probably a Ferrari or something, we're up into P3, this is as to be been. However, I'm now to P2, and Hamilton is the last of the uh, Ferraris, Red Bulls, I believe, and to just stay out to the top, the last of the top three team drivers to stay out, I guess you could say, which is uh, kind of just, oh, yes, there was a caution behind us, I forgot about this, um, I kind of looked at this a little late, so I didn't get the full outcome, but someone must have spun that uh, racing point car. 
Now Waber is gonna make them try to make the move, but we just dive into the pit, so it honestly doesn't really matter. P11, uh, on lap 11. So uh, we're gonna fall down the grid a little bit. Really fast pit stop here. A 1.884 day. That's that is fast. We're in P10, P12. Can we? We might be able to jump a Ferrari here. I think we will. Yes, he's behind us, but uh, Devin Butler has also gotten ahead of us. So we're probably not going to be able to stay ahead of the Ferrari for too long. But we're going to just try and do our best to keep overtaking cars. And, uh, And then uh, with the RS, he goes to our inside, but he isn't able to complete the move there. I left him in the room, but we don't get the best exit, so he's gonna go to the, our inside. We're gonna try and defend, but we ultimately just let him go. He's the faster car, there's no point in fighting it. He's just a huge margin way ahead. Hamilton sets the fastest lap of the race. And Claire just uh, is probably gonna pull away. So it's on lap 14, we're actually kind of close, there's a caution, it's Hamilton, I think he's retired, and that is not going to be good for his uh, championship hopes, because I think him and Botas are, I think, the Ferrari, I'm not totally sure where they are, but I think they're, they're Botas, and they're pretty close. Oh, did Butler hit the wall there? I feel like he hit the wall, but he's going to make a move on Norris, we're going to make it three wide, it slows down Butler on the outside, we're making the move, we're in P10 again. So we're back into the points. We're also going to try and make a move on Norris here. We go to the outside, into the first turn. He's going to turn to the inside for the second and uh, complete the move. Getting a little wide there. And now on lap 20, I believe. We're in P8. Signs is pitted. Teammates pit. And yep, we're in 7. Not too bad. So, what I decide, oh, we hit the wall there, that is not good. Um, but what I think I've decided to do is, uh, not, uh, pit for my second stop. I'm just gonna try and, uh, keep, oh my goodness, that was, could have been a crash there. But I'm just gonna keep, uh, instead of tires to leave of the race, I don't feel like there's any point in, uh, actually pitting since I'm, uh, this high up on the grid. Uh, there's not that many laps left, so I, I feel like I can uh, keep most of, the car, most of the cars that are behind me back there, except for Signs. At the moment, he seems really fast, but we're going to lunge it into the chicane. We're going to see the track limits a little bit, but keep the position. We go to lap 22. Uh, I kind of just feel like if I pit again, that would kind of ruin my race and we'd be out of the points and uh, somehow we're ahead of Gasly. He's not had a good race, I think. Qualified. He started the race kind of low because he had some current penalties he had to deal with. So we are ahead of him, but probably not for too long here. He might get us on the straight here next to our outside. Does not really focus? outside once again and uh, kind of just force him out there, slow him down. It's a breathing room. Now lap 23, Gasly is uh, once again behind us really close and this time he's not waiting till it's straight, he's trying to overtake us through those turns. I do not leave him in space because uh, I kind of want me to be aggressive against him because he's in such a faster car. This lap 24, I think it's a lap later or the same lap, I don't know, it cuts us the thing. And, uh, we guess he goes through, he gets a bad exit, though. And Signs is now trying to make a move, you have to block aggressively, he goes to our inside. And we're gonna get a good exit here, almost hit the wall, and Gassi looks like he's just gonna be, uh, driving away from us at the moment. Oh, we hit the wall there, that is. We're gonna go defensive here on Signs. 
Let's so go back to the racing line here, or we're just gonna try and make a lunge on gas. Way too far back to do that. We go about 25. Uh, Gassy is just pulling away. Not too much we can do about that, but I believe Magnus did pick here now P6. Is that just another car and fresh tires we have to deal with? Now signs goes to the outside. We're just going to dive bomb him into that last chicane to keep the position. We've got 10 laps left in the race and go very wide. That's going to open the door for signs. He goes to our inside and completes the move. And we're just going to go a little wide. It's going to slow us down a little bit. But Got Magnus in behind us, so we might drop down to P8 here. Not be good. We do get the RS off signs. Magnus will have it on us. Ooh, that was close. We kind of clipped his front nose there. And it almost turns us into the wall and he just zooms past, past us right there. But we're going to keep it around the outside. And this you can defend the position. Someone just pit, I think. Tell who now. But on uh, lap 28, we are uh, going around the outside of science on the back straight. We got the speed to do it. We're a pretty quick car in a, a pretty quick car in a straight line, which is uh, what we need for this race. We're up to P6. Now Magnuson is going to overtake us on this straight. We're gonna try and hold it around the outside. Then tap our wheels together just a little bit. Now on lap 30, Magnuson and Signs both behind, both have DRS on. on and uh, Magnuson's gonna look to our outside and squeeze him out just a tad. He's still gonna be there. He's probably gonna try and make a move back straight, but he decides to try and make one into the hairpin. There's yellow flags. Uh, what is happening? I think a car ahead of us is retired. It says we are in P5. I couldn't tell who retired there though. The Magnuson goes around her outside. We're gonna dive it. We're just gonna keep trying to do the same thing, but this time he uh, keeps alongside us. So our tires are probably gonna just maybe to drop off here. That probably wouldn't be good. But we're defending the position quite well here. Now, but later on in that lap, Magnuson is uh, right behind. We're gonna pull to our inside. We're gonna squeeze him and slow him down uh, into the chicane, uh, slowing him down. Now, on lap 32, uh, there's another car looking uh, behind the sign, so maybe that's like two. But Magnuson take that position from us, so we're going to be able to dive on um, into the hairpin of the kick, because Signs has gone to our inside. Very uh, close racing here. Signs is still on our inside. We're going to have DRS off Magnuson, but he's starting to pull away. Like, we have the speed to defend, not really attack so much, but we are gaining on Magnuson here. And uh, we're going to make a huge lunge from super far back. We missed the wall there, and uh, we're back in the P5. But uh, Magnuson is going to go to our inside. We're going to try and swoop around. We hit his front wheel, slows us down a ton, and Magnuson gets, a gets away from us. Onto the last lap, it looks like we're just going to be defending for P6. And it looks like Devin Butler have actually overtaken signs. Boltas wins the race. We're going to be having to defend this position uh, from our old F2 rival for this last uh, sector of the race. And uh, this is going to be really big for us because uh, even if Pat Devin passes us, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be scoring points here, which is uh, pretty good. And uh, this track just really suits the car we have. And, on the last straight, we go into overtake mode for ERS, just 
showing how fast our car really is in a straight line, even when uh, Devin Butler has DRS, he's not really able to gain. And we just go into the last chicane and come to the finish line and we get P6 scoring our first points of the F1. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything. It always looks so easy when it all just clicks. We can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. standings have changed. With that brilliant result, Sebastian Vettel secures top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Okay, so Some amazing like talent out on the track today. But Anthony, first, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Player. It's time to check Gassi, out the constructor standings. Butler Our championship leaders retain their position, but their lead well, is points. shrinking. It was also a strong Grand Prix for the Asset won this weekend. All the way down to 18, American so the car who retired wasn't that much that. Further up the table. I'm equal really parts exhausted him. and elated with this weekend of Formula One. The Be sure to join us for the next one. The Ferrari of Vettel in first, Bottas is third, Hamilton is second. We're we've up to 13th because uh, we scored points. So we're pretty good with not counting with eight. Pretty good for uh, our car level is. So yeah, Mercedes. First for instructors. That uh, retirement really hurt Hamilton in the standings. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. You've had experience with Devon's fast, aggressive style. Any advice for the drivers he passed today? Mm, I don't really remember which one I choose or chose. I think it says you have You're to now ahead of your old F2 rival in the championship. I was before, that must feel but good. I think. Which one? I, I I don't really remember what I chose for these. I think it says like you and Devin weren't far apart by the something. end of the race. How evenly matched are you? I got yeah. He's like he's a great driver, but he doesn't have my team. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just don't remember what I chose off these. Just the top one. Says it didn't look like Appreciate it your time. Speed. I don't know, maybe. But I uh, hope you guys did enjoy uh, this episode of my career. We did end up losing the rivalry, though, because uh, yeah, we're not that fast. We don't really put up a really fast lap during the race. But I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. Don't for forget to uh, like and subscribe. And see you guys in the next one.